This is Leave Your Mark. I am Vince Cortez, and today's guest is Nancy Caruso. She is a true blood entrepreneur, and the proof was when her fourth grade teacher showed her what a marine biologist does. Through many years of experience, she works her way into developing her own nonprofit called Get Inspired. Nancy, thank you for being my guest here today. Thank you, Vince. It's nice to talk to you today. Hi there, and welcome. Now it's time for America's favorite podcast. Leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. If it's fly, loose fit it, it's Cortez. If freeze and shovels in it, it's Cortez. Leave your mark is about inspiring the world, one guess at a time. Pass the word from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh, from urban to suburb, it's Cortez, you heard? And here is our host, Vince Cortez. Well... We had a brief conversation yesterday and you have gone through quite a bit to arrive where you have. And this is a true labor of love. Everyone will get to experience that as they hear your story. What I'd like to do is a little background on you and let the people find out something about you. So you're born in Alexander, Virginia and mom and dad, mom, Nancy, dad, David, uh, mom was the homemaker, dad worked with Secret Service. So rather interesting vocations. Uh, you have four siblings, you're one of five. So David, Roseanne, Sean, and Isaiah. Okay. And you were fond of visiting Pittsburgh. So started out in Pittsburgh and then worked your way back and you have some experience there. So now take me to when you were in your childhood there and uh, explain to me with your four siblings what life was like. Uh, well, grew up in Virginia and uh, we'd spent a lot of time visiting family in Pittsburgh. Um, got to spend summers and Christmas breaks and spring breaks up there visiting grandparents and uh, friends of our family. And um, Virginia, and we have similar weather, but uh, one of the interesting things that uh, came out of my dad working for the White House as a Secret Service agent is my birthday's on the 4th of July. And I got to go and go to the company picnic on the 4th of July at the White House. Oh, and at that good. time, we could bring our friends. So I would have my girlfriends in high school, you know, sitting with me on the White House lawn, having my birthday party, watching the fireworks. And how old were you? That was, well, that was my whole childhood that was happening. Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's, I like that. So now you, uh, you said that you came back to Pittsburgh. So this is kind of interesting because Virginia and Pittsburgh, as you said, similar type climate, um, Virginia, similar culture, a little bit of touch of the South, but very similar still. So uh, you were at Mount Vernon High School. And at Mount Vernon High School, share with me some of your interests and activities you were doing. Well, I, I was in the marching band and uh, we were a, actually a nationally recognized marching band. So that took up a lot of my time, um, but it also gave me a lot of discipline. And, um, and and although Pittsburgh nor Alexandria, Virginia touched the ocean, um, I was pretty certain um, at age 10 that I was going to be a marine biologist. So all through my middle school and high school, I was uh, focused, laser focused on studying that and being good in science and uh, being in all the, the clubs related to biology and doing extra science projects. And I, worked I don't want to jump too far forward because you said <laughs> that it was your fourth grade teacher. Yeah. And how did she uh, present what a marine biologist is to you? Well, Mrs. May was... Um, uh, her first year teaching, she was teaching my fourth grade class, and she was teaching us about plate tectonics, which was a, a pretty new theory at the time. And she, she was having us build them out of paper mache. So my hands are all covered in glue and water. And she was telling us about how these plates move around underneath the ocean. And I had never thought in my little 10 year old brain that there was even land underneath the ocean because I'd never even seen it before. And I said, Mrs. May, what is it called? Those people that study that. And she said, that's called oceanography. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to be when I grow up. And so from that day forward, that's exactly what I've focused on to this day, to this day right now. Wow. I love that when the light of what your true calling is speaks to you and it happens at any age. So th this is exciting. So now 
you're going to graduate from high school, Mount Vernon, and you're off to the Florida Institute of Technology. So share with me your experience. You were mentioning that there's only a handful of these types of uh, institutions in the United States. Yeah, at the time, there was only about six schools in the whole country that had marine biology degrees. And um, I really wanted to go there. It was the school, the only other person I knew in the whole world that was a marine bi wanted to be a marine biologist went to that school. So that's where I wanted to go. Um, I didn't actually get the grades, the SAT scores to get in. But the one thing I do have, one gift I have, um, it's a, it's a contrary to my husband's favorite things about me, but I'm a big pain in the neck. And so my tenacity- <laughs> The proverbial squeaky wheel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so my tenacity and persistence, basically bugging them to death, um, got me into the school. And um, so they let me in. And then I actually had to live up to that. So I, I worked really, really hard. It was the hardest part of my whole life going to college. I did two majors in four years and um, marine biology and aquaculture. And I worked two other jobs. And uh so I just kept saying, I don't care if I have to serve fish sandwiches at McDonald's when I graduate, as long as I get that degree. So uh, it was really important to me. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Be our friend on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You are listening to, listening to Vince Cortez. Cortez. We just want you to leave your mark. Now you get through the degree and the journey and you've arrived at 13 years ago uh begins because it sounds like the experience that you get and going from different employer and different nonprofit and traveling as you did michigan and uh, california and uh, share with me how you worked your way out of college and how life began to take root well the the biggest dream of any marine biologist child is to go work at sea world and I got an interview at SeaWorld, but found out that I couldn't afford to work for them at the time. So I actually had to turn down my dream job. So I ended up going to Mississippi and working on catfish farms, going to, to Michigan, working on coral farms, going out to California, selling fish farming equipment, working at an aquarium, and finally found my, my true place in the world, which is in that setting behind me, um, if you can see it, it's in the kelp forest underwater and working with people to change the world, essentially. Um, I had no idea uh, what my gifts really were. Um, and this is kind of interesting because I always thought I was going to be this great scientist and, and that's my calling was to be a marine biologist. But it turns out that um, I, I have a, a great ability to um, share my passion and, and bring a lot of people in around me to help me with what it is I'm doing. So uh, it, just exhibiting my pure passion is my gift because I, I find that people want to follow me and help me with my, my pursuit of doing whatever it is, whether it's restoring a, an endangered species or uh, going out and doing beach cleanups, or I seem to be able to get people to follow me. And um, so it's been a, a really interesting journey to figure out what it is that I'm actually good at because I thought I was a good scientist and I thought I was a good scuba diver and and it turns out that I'm actually um, good at kind of leading and and bringing people with me along for the ride. This is exciting so let's touch on this because I'm always intrigued by scuba diving so share with me a little bit about that part of the process because that's like you know if you're going to be a marine biologist you got to get underwater. Yeah. and you got to get your hands dirty under there so what was that like when you first learned how to scuba well I did in Virginia when I was 16 years old as soon as it was legal and I didn't know anybody else who scuba dived and I can imagine my parents uh, just sending me off to go I, I remember getting in some stranger's car um, after taking classes at the local uh, military base swimming pool and our class was supposed to go out and dive in a rock quarry to get our certifications in April weather, water temperature was 48 degrees and my parents just waved goodbye to me as I drove off to go and scuba dive for the first time in in open water and uh, I did the same thing when I was 18 I got to go out to Ocean City New, uh, Maryland and dive in the ocean for the first time and uh, I remember seeing uh, when I, as soon as I got to the bottom of the ocean I started to cry uh, I cried like a baby. 
I was seasick as heck for two days on the boat because I didn't know I got seasick. That was an interesting find for a new marine biologist who was about to go to school for four years to get a degree. And, and talked uh, your way into that one. Yeah. You were feeling the pressure. I still get seasick <laughs> to this day. And I work on boats every single week. Wow. So then you obviously got over that. But this is this is great because now you're, you've experienced uh, developing your skill set. So something that you weren't even aware that you were capable of actually plays out to be one of your greatest attributes. And that is when you're a nonprofit, you know, you need a good leader. And as it turns out, you're a great leader. So this is exciting. So share with me how get inspired and, and how you put it together, because it sounded like you'd come from uh, your last journey there where things were going well, but the company wasn't properly funded or something happened there that you just decided it was time for you to do your own thing. So share with me in that moment when that transition happened. Yeah, from about 2002 to 2009, um, I ended up working for three different nonprofits while I was doing a really important project to restore the kelp forests of Orange County, California. Um, they had been gone for 25 years and kelp forests are the things behind me. They're underwater forests that house over 800 species of animals. And I was trying to finish this project. It was really important. I had already taught like 2,500 kids how to, how to grow kelp in their classrooms. I had trained 250 volunteer divers by that point. We were diving three days a week. Um, it was now seven years into the project and we were seeing results. And after the third layoff of trying to put, you know, falling down, putting the pieces back together, starting the project up again and falling down again. Um, I was trying to decide what to do. And I had two choices. One was to start my own nonprofit and keep going or to take a job that somebody was offering me to work with kelp and get paid with a steady paycheck. And I went to my husband who is the absolute, my, my biggest fan and my absolute rock um, and an engineer. So he's logical. And, uh, and he said, I said, what should I do? And he said, Nancy, you're a bird. Don't put yourself in a cage. Go fly, go jump off the cliff and we'll figure it out. And so I did. I started to get inspired. I didn't have any income. And um, I had, you know, like one grant for about $4,000 to kind of keep things going. I'm teaching, you know, in 32 different schools with classroom equipment and dive boats and dive gear and volunteers and I had to get insurance, liability insurance and boat insurance. So starting from ground zero and um, and it worked. <laughs> well, it's different too when you're nonprofit because you're not selling anything to generate income. So a lot of people don't understand that about a nonprofit. Right. It's yeah. Like I, don't have it's, a, I don't sell cheeseburgers or, or <laughs> widgets. So uh, people have to see the value in what I'm doing and pay me to do it and, and hope because there's no, no guarantees that I can restore a species. You know, the kelp worked. I'm now restoring green abalone and white sea bass and pismo clams. And I, nobody knows how to do this and nobody knows how to do it oh, right. Share That's with me the part of the story. Now you had 2,500 students and 200 volunteers. Now, how many of these people followed the leader and came in to get inspired with you? And then as you're getting through the the grant of the four grand i mean we're 13 years removed here so fill me in on how things develop because you have an incredible story about the growing on the shoreline there and recreating the the sea life so what went on there well everybody followed me um i've now taught over 12,000 students i've trained over 450 volunteers I still uh, am out every week working on the beaches, working underwater and, and teaching in the schools. As a matter of fact, today I'm on my way out at 2.30 to go deliver some new aquarium systems to a local school uh, so that they can help me in growing and doing aquaponics, actually, which is a whole other aspect of this. Um, but I, I have it. I found it kind of a niche almost because. Uh, you know, aquariums have buildings and museums have buildings, but people have to go there to enjoy it. And you have to pay money to enter. And that aquarium or that museum has a lot of overhead, but I don't have that overhead. I actually use the students' classrooms as my laboratories. So the students are my scientists 
And by the way, if you ever want to solve the world's problems, go to a sixth grader because they know all the answers and they're not afraid to tell you silly things that actually usually work. Uh, I go to them to solve all my problems. Their minds aren't clouded yet. Their minds aren't clouded yet. Yeah, they're brilliant. And they're not afraid to tell you what they think yet. If you are listening from Australia, Florida, or just from around the corner. From East Coast to West Coast outlets, if you're not to the dirty South straight, make a left body body. Contact us. Leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. Now, the thing that's really cool here is, is, is at the young age, when you referenced, you didn't have a lot of these resources. Look at what you've created for not just a handful of kids, but like classrooms full of kids. So um, share with me when you had them take the allergy home and they grew it, like, what was that process? And then there was something that was extinct for what, almost 20 years or longer? Yeah, well, Get, Get Inspired is founded in the fact that I was inspired, you know, in the blink of a second to change my, or to create my whole life's trajectory. And so I try to bring that to people. Um, and sometimes it works. I have students that I taught 15 years ago that are now marine biologists. I have one student that's actually a kelp biologist because of this project. Um, I've mentored a lot of students who've become scientists. One's a rocket scientist, um, help them publish their own scientific papers while they're in high school. And that comes from them having the opportunity to do hands-on work in their classrooms. So I would go into the classrooms and teach the kids how to reproduce the kelp and they would grow, it's microscopic, it's 400 times smaller than you can see. So it's like the emperor's new clothes, right? I go in and I tell them, you're growing this and we can look under a microscope and see these tiny little things under the microscope, but they can't see it until it gets about four months old. And then it's about a 16th of an inch tall. And it, we put it in the ocean, as you can see behind me, they grow as tall as 150 feet, these oh underwater trees. And it was gone for 25 years. These forests were gone off of our coast for 25 years. And after 10 years of us growing and planting it and 5,000 kids and 250 volunteers working three, three days a week underwater and every day is in their classrooms, we actually restored a whole ecosystem that now is thriving and has 800 different species that live in it. And it's a free aquarium that's open every single day here. This is spectacular news. I mean, and this is just all through passion. Like the idea of what those kids got to experience uh, is something that you said was a 16th of an inch to a hundred and feet. Like the process with you go down, like you're thinking like you plant a tree, drop a seed in the soil. How does it, how does it work when you take it in the water the same way? And no, it's, it's a lot harder than that. Uh, the ocean is a very complex uh, place, uh, lots of chemistry involved and all the right conditions had to come, you know, for that kelp to grow. But um, when, and some, some spots where we planted, it worked and some spots didn't work. And I have no idea why uh, restoration in the ocean is really hard, which is why not very many people do it. Um, I, I am about to embark on another project here to start replanting abalone in the ocean and the abalone are, um, uh, almost extinct, uh, endangered as well, many species. And uh, that's going to be difficult as well. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, the well, students are exciting. all involved in that too. Yeah. Now that you brought us up to what you're currently doing is that's that's the current job you got going on? Well, we, I call them projects in the nonprofit world. They're called projects. And let me grab one here. This is an abalone. Most people have seen the shells before. Okay. That's an abalone they're shell. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful. That's the backside. So they look like rocks. That's my tag on it. It says okay. like 64. But um, the insides are absolutely beautiful. And yeah. most people are familiar with the inside because that's when it's dead, right? So we make barrettes and buttons and, and jewelry out of them. But we ate them to death, essentially. They're snails and they don't move very fast. So we ate them all. And they used to be iconic, like the crabs of Maryland in California. So imagine if, if Maryland ate all their crabs, they didn't have crab left, or New England ate all their lobsters and didn't have any lobsters left. That's what's happened here in California. Wow. 
this is really exciting because this isn't something that makes the news frequently and you're doing some great work here so we're really excited to have you on here uh, I, what i want to do now is I, i'm going to ask you and get your information but before you go i want to ask you how would you like to leave your mark and leave your legacy well that's a really easy question to answer um when i was young in 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 college actually i saw this really powerful movie and it was about south africa and the power of one was the name of the movie and i guess that impacted me for the rest of my life because i realized that you know we have big governments and we have you know giant foundations and political parties but really everything that's ever been good on this planet has started out with one person having an idea. And so that's that's the legacy I want to leave. That's beautiful. And you're right. It does start with one person. And when the motivation and that the power of the passion is behind you, anything can happen is you're a living example of that. That's yep. fantastic. Well, I, I want you, can you share with me real quick um, some of your resources on the internet so folks can find you? Sure. Um, you can Google my name, Nancy Caruso. Um, you can Google my name with kelp, with abalone, with sea bass. Um, just Google Nancy Caruso and the ocean or marine biologist. I've been on lots of TVs and I was on National Geographic. That was like my That's highlight. That's cool. Uh, SeaWorld time. National Geographic. That's, you know. <laughs> You're right there. Uh, there's a there's a lot of movies on my website, documentaries on my website. You can watch about our projects and programs. What's the name of the website? Getinspiredinc.org. Inc.org. And you okay. can donate too to help with projects. Yes, <laughs> definitely do that. Well, I want to thank you once again. What what a breath of fresh air you are, and to know a warrior like you is out there saving our sea life and helping our environment. We love you for that. So Amen. keep up the good work. Stay true to the passion. And I'm sure there's plenty more to come. You got too good of energy. So I'm sure we're going to hear more from you. But I want to thank you again for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to Leave Your Mark today. Tune into our next episode of Leave Your Mark with Vince Cortez. Be blessed. You just left your mark. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Listen to more episodes on demand. Just click Leave Your Mark with Bing Cortez.